I got up here today and asked that myself so that the musicians and comedians will know there actually is a guy with a smaller audience. So don't feel bad for yourself. Don't feel bad for yourself. I got to get up here and force you to hear my voice. Um, I guess we're on like a tight time limit, so I'm going to tell you real quick. My name is Gary, but I go by G.A. Johnson. I published five novels, and I'm shopping this six one out to agents right now. Getting those piles of rejections in, so I thought I'd let you reject me to my face. It's a lot more fun that way. But this novel is a, it's about a young man who's growing up in a United States that is completely segregated by political affiliation. So if you're blue, you stay in your fucking blue state. If you're red, you're in your red fucking state. But Alden, he doesn't really fit in with any of that, so he goes on a, a journey. So we're going to go to uh, a little spot here. The main character is uh, left where he grew up in Denver. He's in Prescott, Arizona, and he's staying at the house of these nice Christian folk who are taking care of him, showing the great American way. So we pick up at the breakfast table. And Harrison, you know, just tell me to shut the fuck up when I run out of time, please. I'm going to give you a light. Light means you have a middle left. All right, cool beans. The young lady puts a sliver of butter on her knife and spreads it on her gently on her breakfast. No meat on her plate again. So concludes her first week of vegetarian life. Mr. S puts down his coffee. Barbara, would you please answer our question? Barbara looks at her plate. How could I be up all night chatting if you guys have my internet and my phone locked after 9.30? And why do you look so tired, dear? Ms. S puts her disarming smile on. I was reading, okay? Is that a sin? The twins are born at the scene. The one on the left belches aloud. Before Mrs. S can rebuke him, the one on the right blurts out a random question. Hey, Al. Yeah, Jake? Al this smiles. I'm Josh. Yeah, Josh? Whose army tag do you have hanging on your mirror? All the jabs will leave a sausage in his mouth to sell them on. Well, he chews. It's a long story, really. Chew, chew, swallow. Basically, it's the person who passed away that I knew, sort of. Mr. S refills his cup. Was he killed in action? Not exactly. Not exactly. All the spikes, two pieces of sausage into his mouth and picks up his empty plate. He takes plates from Mrs. S and Barbara, too, and brings them to the kitchen sink. Mr. S rejoins battle with his daughter as the boys burp the alphabet. I'm going to go get ready for church, Alden says. He heads back upstairs to his loft. The dog tag hangs from the mirror on his dresser. He takes it off and puts it in his sock drawer next to the landing of his Virgin Mary. The kids are searching the room again. Better find the spot, honey. He takes them out again. Well, they can't search my body. He puts the card in his wallet and puts the dog tag on, tucking it under his shirt. Not long after, the twins run upstairs to the room and the rest of the Saunders plan falls behind to put on their Sunday best. They head out the front door and the bell rings. The Thumb Butte Christian Assembly is at the end of the block. It's an old brick church with high bell tower and large stained glass windows. Normally, Christian churches would remove images of saints following the trend of neo iconoclasm. That's a term he learned from his mentor recently. Regardless, the Prescott Historical and Preservation Society decided not to entirely decapitalize the old mission. However, the crucifix and altar were removed and placed in a diorama about conquistadors at Sherlock Holmes Museum. Alden doesn't remember the reason for this, but the Saunders had provided him plenty of books should he want to investigate the reading. Alden has wished to investigate a different way. He's heard rumors about a man claiming to be a Franciscan monk who was protesting for the right to use the church altar for a Catholic mass. He claimed they were infringing on his religious rights because they were denying us of an object sacred to his faith. Naturally, this made him think of Maria. The Saunders plan heads to the seats next to the largest stained glass motif to painting St. Christopher carrying the Bay Christ in the water. The band plays variations of minor chords as the lead singer welcomes everyone to their celebration. A projection screen lowers down from where the crucifix once hung, and the lyrics to How Great Is Our God appear over a beach with footprints in sand. All the sings, Mrs. S says he sings well. She'd like to see him join worship team. Barbara doesn't like to sing. Jake and Josh are downstairs at the kids' Bible study. The faithful clap and wave their hands and through the air. There's a girl in front of Alden who looks like Sam from behind. 
Red and blue light are the stained glass, the lights on her back of her neck. Her upbraided hair is decorated with light, white flowers, baby's breath. Alden doesn't notice the pastor take the stage. He doesn't wonder at the shadow that replaces the colored light on this girl's neck. Then there's a bright, a bright flash of light, followed by a barrage of broken glass. Alden's ears are ringing. Smoke and screams fill the air, the name in the aisles. It's happened so fast, he hasn't got. The girl in front of him has fallen to the ground, clutching the side of her neck where a piece of blue glass juts out. Blood pours down. To his right, Mr. S is hunched over. Barbara embracing her against his chest. The faithful and the rose closest to the stage are writhing in agony besides their dead and quickly dying wounds. Mrs. S pulls Barbara away from Mr. S and cries harder, seeing that her daughter is unharmed. I think I got it right. And there's more blood and guts after that, folks. So, thanks for your time. Thank you too. Okay. Uh, there, everyone. That was.